Proverbs 11 verses 1 to 31, a false balance, is abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. When pride cometh, then cometh shame, but with the lowly is wisdom. The integrity of the upright shall guide them, but the perverseness of transgressors shall destroy them. Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivereth from death. The righteousness of the perfect shall direct his way, but the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness. The righteousness of the upright shall deliver them, but transgressors shall be taken in their own naughtiness. When a wicked man dieth, his expectation shall perish, and the hope of unjust men perisheth. The righteous is delivered out of trouble, and the wicked cometh in his stead. An hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor, but through knowledge shall the just be delivered. When it goeth well with the righteous, the city rejoiceth, and when the wicked perish, there is shouting. By the blessing of the upright the city is exalted, but it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. He that is void of wisdom dispiseth his neighbor, but a man of understanding holdeth his peace. A talebearer revealeth secrets, but he that is of a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. Where no counsel is, the people fall, but in the multitude of counselors there is safety. He that is surety for a stranger shall smart for it, and he that hath a suretyship is sure. A gracious woman reteneth honor, and strong men retain riches. The merciful man doeth good to his own soul, but he that is cruel troubleth his own flesh. The wicked worketh a deceitful work, but to him that soweth righteousness shall be a sure reward. As righteousness tendeth to life, so he that pursueth evil pursueth it to his own death. They that are of a froward heart are abomination to the Lord, but such as are upright in their way are his delight. Though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished, but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. As a jewel of gold in a swine's snout, so is a fair woman which is without discretion. The desire of the righteous is only good, but the expectation of the wicked is wrath. There is that scattereth, and yet increaseth, and there is that withholdeth more than is meet, but it tendeth to poverty. The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. He that withholdeth corn, the people shall curse him, but blessing shall be upon the head of him that selleth it. He that diligently seeketh good procureth favor, but he that seeketh mischief, it shall come unto him. He that trusteth in his riches shall fall, but the righteous shall flourish as a branch. He that troubleth his own house shall inherit the wind, and the fool shall be servant to the wise of heart. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. Behold, the righteous shall be recompensed in the earth, much more the wicked and the sinner. Opening Sentence Proverbs 11 verse 1 A false balance is abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. Finding the theme, weighed in the balance. In the law of Moses, God gave instructions to the nation of Israel regarding just measures. Leviticus 19 verse 36 just balances, just weights, a just ephah, and a just hin shall ye have. I am the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt. Deuteronomy 25 colon 15 But thou shalt have a perfect and just weight, a perfect and just measure shalt thou have, that thy days may be lengthened in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. This law is both literal and figurative. Not only was Israel to have a perfect weight in the physical sense, he was also expected to have a perfect spiritual weight within himself in order to discern good and evil. To weigh means to judge the worth or to discern the quality. When reading through this chapter, it is helpful to visualize a traditional hanging scale with two bowls located at equal distances from a central pivot point. Even Jesus summed up the law of God with a comparison to hanging in the balance of a scale. Matthew 22 verses 37 to 40 Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. 
The comparisons found in section 2 of Proverbs are both literal and figurative. They picture the actions and motives of the son being weighed in a balance to determine their value to God. The law of Moses is the standard of measure. God has taught the son what is delightful and what is abominable. Ironically, the item of greater weight or value is located lower on the scale, while the item of lower value is located higher. A spiritual example of this would be haughtiness and pride compared to humility and lowliness. A solid item with integrity has more weight to it than a similar item that is hollow inside. The upright are lowly. Proverbs 11 verses 2 to 3 When pride cometh, then cometh shame, but with the lowly is wisdom. The integrity of the upright shall guide them, but the perverseness of transgressors shall destroy them. In Job's parable 29 colon 1, he asked to be weighed in a just balance. Job 31 colon 6, let me be weighed in an even balance, that God may know mine integrity. Filthy lucre. A wicked man stands to profit financially by using a false balance, but his profit will not endure. In the day of wrath, the wicked will be weighed according to God's righteousness and found wanting. Proverbs 11 verses 4 to 6 Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivereth from death. The righteousness of the perfect shall direct his way, but the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness. The righteousness of the upright shall deliver them, but transgressors shall be taken in their own naughtiness. The word naughtiness is derived from the root word naught, meaning nothing or nothingness. Transgressors are weighed in the scale and found to have no value to God. Daniel 5 verse 27 Deliver us from evil. Proverbs 11 verses 8 to 9 The righteous is delivered out of trouble, and the wicked cometh in his stead. An hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor, but through knowledge shall the just be delivered. A time of trouble has been prophesied to come upon the nation of Israel. During this trial, God will weigh his people in the balance to discover their integrity. Those who keep his commandments unto the end of this trial will be delivered from evil. During this time, Israel will be tempted to reject God's commandments in exchange for physical and temporary comforts. Unbelieving brothers and neighbors will turn against God-fearing men and deliver them to death. Jesus also warned his disciples about this coming tribulation. Matthew 10 verses 21 to 22 And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. The City Proverbs 11 verses 10 to 11 When it goeth well with the righteous, the city rejoiceth, and when the wicked perish, there is shouting. By the blessing of the upright the city is exalted, but it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. The city of Jerusalem is the focus of prophecy regarding Israel because it will be the capital city of the whole earth. Isaiah 2 verse 3 When God takes vengeance on all the wickedness committed by the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the righteous will rejoice. Psalm 58 verse 10 The righteous shall rejoice when he sees the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. A talbearer. Proverbs 11 verses 12 to 13 He that is void of wisdom dispiseth his neighbor, but a man of understanding holdeth his peace. A talebearer revealeth secrets, but he that is of a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. During the time of Israel's fiery trial, brother will betray brother and neighbor will betray neighbor. This action was forbidden in the law of Moses, where it is also connected with being a talebearer. Leviticus 19 verse 16 Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people, neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor, I am the Lord. The counsel of the Lord. Proverbs 11 verse 14 Where no counsel is, the people fall, but in the multitude of counselors there is safety. The instruction of God is called counsel. Proverbs 1 verses 25 and 30, 8, 14. God gave counsel to his people in the law of Moses, and he taught them to put it into practice in the book of Proverbs. God's word was spoken to the nation by the prophets, who also recorded God's word in the scriptures. 
There were times in Israel's history when God stopped speaking to them because of their rejection of him. Isaiah 41 verse 28 For I beheld, and there was no man, even among them, and there was no counselor that, when I asked of them, could answer a word. Amos 8 verse 11 Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Suretyship. Proverbs 11 verse 15 He that is surety for a stranger shall smart for it, and he that had a suretyship is sure. The topic of becoming surety was covered in Proverbs chapter 6. This is particularly applicable to Israel during the tribulation when they will be tempted to enter into suretyship with the Antichrist in order to obtain food. A gracious woman. Proverbs 11 verse 16 A gracious woman retaineth honor, and strong men retain riches. There are 24 references to certain nameless women in the book of Proverbs. In section 1, all such references were negative. For example, they were called strange, evil, whorish, harlot, and foolish. In section 2, the majority of references are also negative, with only three exceptions, virtuous, wise, and gracious. Curiously, the gracious woman, singular, is compared with strong men, plural. In this proverb, the word gracious is defined as honorable. This gracious woman pictures God's wife, Israel, who displays inner strength by remaining faithful to God according to his word. Sowing Reaping Proverbs 11 verses 17 to 19 The merciful man doeth good to his own soul, but he that is cruel troubleth his own flesh. The wicked worketh a deceitful work, but to him that soweth righteousness shall be a sure reward. As righteousness tendeth to life, so he that pursueth evil pursueth it to his own death. The actions of a merciful, righteous son will tend to be rewarded with good. The actions of a cruel, wicked son will tend to death. A froward heart. Proverbs 11 verse 20 They that are of a froward heart are abomination to the Lord but such as are upright in their way are his delight. The word froward is found in the book of Proverbs more than any other book of the Bible. A son that is not grounded in the wisdom of God will be tossed to and fro. Froward means out of the way. God delights in the son who walks in his way, but the froward son disgusts God and makes him angry. This sheds light on Jesus' words spoken to those in Israel who claim to do the works of God. Psalm 101 verse for a froward heart shall depart from me, I will not know a wicked person. Matthew 7.23 And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. A confederacy against the Lord. Proverbs 11 verse 21 Though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished, but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. Mankind in his wickedness has joined together multiple times to stand against the Lord. This was witnessed at the Tower of Babel and at the cross. This will happen again during the tribulation when the kings of the earth join forces with the Antichrist to war against Jesus Christ at his second coming. Genesis 11 verse 6 And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do and now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Psalm 2 verse 2 The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together, against the Lord, and against his anointed. Acts 4 verse 26 The kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord, and against his Christ. Revelation 16 verse 14 For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. A Fair Woman Proverbs 11 verse 22 As a jewel of gold in a swine's snout, so is a fair woman which is without discretion. The word fair describes outward beauty, but it also describes things that are pleasing to both the flesh and the spirit. The strange woman in Proverbs 7 used fair speech to seduce the son. To be without discretion is to be undiscerning and lacking in the ability to use knowledge aright. Proverbs 15 verse 2. In context, this fair woman pictures God's unfaithful wife, Israel. 
Lack of discernment leads her to reject God, planting, watering, and harvesting. The expectation of a harvest is based upon what is sown and the care given as it comes to maturity. This is the natural law of sowing and reaping. The harvest of the wicked son is wrath, poverty, cursing, mischief, trouble, and death. The fruit of the righteous son is goodness, increase, fat, blessing, favor, flourishing, and life. Proverbs 11 verses 23 to 30 The desire of the righteous is only good, but the expectation of the wicked is wrath. There is that scattereth, and yet increaseth, and there is that withholdeth more than is meet, but it tendeth to poverty. The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. He that withholdeth corn, the people shall curse him, but blessing shall be upon the head of him that selleth it. He that diligently seeketh good procureth favor, but he that seeketh mischief, it shall come unto him. He that trusteth in his riches shall fall, but the righteous shall flourish as a branch. He that troubleth his own house shall inherit the wind, and the fool shall be servant to the wise of heart. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. These verses are especially applicable during the time of Jacob's trouble. Jeremiah 30 verse 7 Wicked men will hoard their riches in which they have placed their trust, yet they will be spiritually impoverished. Righteous men will make their riches available to those in need and be blessed by God. During the tribulation, wicked men who accept the mark of the beast will be physically rich, but their destiny is the lake of fire and eternal torment. Revelation 19 verse 20 Psalm 52 verse 7 Lo, this is the man that made not God his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches and strengthened himself in his wickedness. James 5, 1, Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Nothing but trouble. The word trouble is found three times in this chapter, verses 8, 17, 29. A cruel man troubles his own house and his own flesh when he disobeys God. King Ahab was one an example of a wicked king who disobeyed God and troubled his own house. 1 Kings chapter 18 foreshadows what will take place in the middle of the seven-year tribulation. 1 Kings 18 verse 18 and Elijah answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. Conclusion Proverbs 11 verse 31 Behold, the righteous shall be recompensed in the earth, much more the wicked and the sinner. When God finally weighs the motives and actions of mankind by his law, he will declare their worth and mete out the appropriate rewards. God's justice requires that sin be recompensed. Summary In the law of Moses, God gave Israel a just balance wherein their motives and actions could be weighed. God's word determines what is false versus what is merciful versus what is cruel. God's Son will be rewarded according to His obedience to His Father's instructions. Dispensational Consideration Israel was required by God to keep His law. He knew it was impossible for them to keep it perfectly, so He included a sacrificial system within the law to cover their unintentional failures. Israel agreed to keep God's law. Therefore, He must follow God's exact instructions by faith. The standard for righteousness in the current dispensation of grace is no longer the law of Moses, Romans 6 verse 14. Believers cannot keep the requirements of the law to be approved or rewarded by God. Instead, God has given new instructions to the church through Apostle Paul. Under this new dispensation, a person must put their trust in the work that Jesus Christ did on the cross. God's plan of salvation today is simply trusting that Jesus Christ took upon himself the sin of the world, paid the death penalty by shedding his innocent blood, and then rose from the dead, thus proving that his payment was accepted. By simply believing this truth by faith, a person is given the free gift of eternal life. This is the simplicity of the gospel, 2 Corinthians 11 verse 3. It is important to know, to believe, and to follow the correct instructions from God's Word in order to have assurance of salvation.
Riches are not considered a blessing in the dispensation of grace like they were under the law of Moses. However, in every dispensation men are charged to put their trust in God and not in riches. Life Application A person is saved from hell by simply accepting God's free gift. However, a saved person will also receive a reward for his work. This reward will be meted out according to the quality of a believer's work based upon his knowledge of the doctrine made known to him. In this dispensation, 1 Corinthians 3 verse 13, this doctrine is found in the epistles of the Apostle Paul, Romans through Philemon. In order to build properly, a believer must use the proper instructions. The Apostle Paul was a wise master builder, 1 Corinthians 3 verse 10 to whom God gave the blueprints for believers to follow today, 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1. Prophets are no longer speaking in this dispensation of grace because the word of God is complete. If a believer desires to know God's instructions, he will find them by reading the Holy Bible. If a person claims to be a prophet today, he is deceived and should be avoided. Proverbs 12 verse 9 He that is despised, and hath a servant, is better than he that honoreth himself and lacketh bread. In chapter 12, the son learns how the word received will influence the work accomplished. Proverbs chapter 11 homework. Concordance search. There are 16 verses in the King James Bible using the word integrity. Read through these verses to get a biblical definition of the word. The word heart is used in four of these verses indicating that integrity is an action based upon knowledge and belief. Cross-reference, read and consider the following verses in parenthesis. During the time of Jacob's trouble, Jeremiah 30 verse 7, the descendants of Jacob, he Israel, will turn against one another, Matthew 10 verse 21. Israel's neighbors will also rise up against them, Zechariah 14 verse 13. Israel's enemies will be members of their own house, Micah 7 verse 6. Note, during the tribulation, Gentile nations will be blessed or cursed depending on how they treat believing Israel. Read Matthew 25 verses 31 to 46. This is not referring to Gentiles who have been saved in today's dispensation of grace. Once saved today, you are no longer identified as a Gentile, but as a member of the body of Christ, or a new creature. The body of Christ will be raptured to heaven before the seven-year tribulation period. See 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 7. Vengeance upon Jerusalem. The city of Jerusalem is the center of God's wrath. He is taking vengeance on all the evil that his unfaithful wife, the harlot, has committed. Psalm 58 verse 10. The righteous shall rejoice when he sees the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. Matthew 23 verse 37 O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Revelation 19 verse 2 For true and righteous are his judgments, for he hath judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. Compare scriptures. Compare the following verses to understand that the nation of Israel is being tried by fire to purify them. Zechariah 13 verse 9. 1 Peter 1 verse 7 and 4 12. Concordance search. Find talebearer in your King James Bible. Note its first use in Leviticus has to do with betraying innocent blood. Similarly, Satan walks up and down as a talebearer. Job 1 verse 7 and 2 colon 2. Satan worked in the children of disobedience to betray the innocent blood of Jesus Christ. Read the remaining uses of the word talebearer in the book of Proverbs in order to get a proper understanding of the word. List the other words found within those verses to describe a talebearer. Proverbs 11 verse 3, Proverbs 18 verse 8, Proverbs 20 verse 19, Proverbs 26 verse 20, Proverbs 26 verse 22. Concordance search. The word counsel is found 143 times in the KDB. Read through a few verses and consider how the word is used in context to establish a biblical definition. Also, search for both ask and counsel as used together. 
Note that men will either seek God's counsel or that of false gods. Concordance search. Find both froward and heart as used together in your KJB. Consider the context of these verses and note the words associated with having a froward heart, wicked, abomination, no good and perverse. For further study, read Isaiah 29 verse 13 and Isaiah chapter 57 to get a glimpse into Israel's froward heart. Note how God will restore them in the end. Romans 11 verse 26. Concordance search. Search a concordance for the words confederate and confederacy to discover Satan's plot against Jesus and the nation of Israel. Concordance search. The word fair is found in 62 verses in the King James Bible. It has more than one meaning in varying contexts. Sample a few verses and compare them to the definition found in the Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Fair is most often used as an adjective to describe females, but it also refers to the weather, Jesus' speech, the moon, and many other things. Make a list of some of the things described as fair. Fair is also used as a noun to describe a public event where people buy, sell, and trade. Mart is a Bible word that can be cross-referenced with fair in the KJB. Study Ezekiel chapter 27, Isaiah 23 verse 3, and Revelation chapter 18 to understand fair in this context. Comparison, find the word rich in the book of James. The book of James is written to the twelve tribes of Israel, James 1 verse 1, and is applicable during the last days. Of tribulation, James 5 verse 3. Consider each use of the word rich in this context. Under the law of Moses, a man would be blessed with physical riches for following God's commandments. But during the tribulation, a man will only be rich if he has been unfaithful to God and taken the mark of the beast. The tribulation period denotes yet another dispensational change found in the word of God.